Welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. Today, I'm excited to introduce the most distinctive and also the most ecologically important pine species in the Southeast, the longleaf pine, Pinus palustris. This is a very large species, commonly reaching 80 to 100 feet tall in the right conditions. And it's also exceptionally long lived. Many individuals can live as long as 300 years and some individuals have even been recorded living as long as 400 or more years. Longleaf pine is the foundation of the extremely biodiverse ecosystem that once blanketed the southeastern coastal plain, the longleaf pine ecosystem. And this is a fire dependent ecosystem. And this species has evolved physical characteristics and a life cycle that are adapted to those frequent fires. In future videos, I'll go over this ecologically important and critically endangered ecosystem, as well as the unique life cycle this species has. But today we're going to focus on identifying features of longleaf pine. The bark of Pinus palustris has irregularly shaped bark plates that are very thin. They don't have deep fissures between them. And the exterior is a brownish gray color, but they're thin and flaky, and they kind of flake away to reveal the orangey brownish fresh bark underneath. It's a very scaly, flaky, and thin bark. The needles of longleaf pine are one of its most distinctive features. They occur in the bundles, fascicles, of three. Occasionally, they occur in fascicles of three and four, but usually just three. The biggest feature that is the most obvious is their length. They are extremely long, the longest out of any of our pine species. They can be eight inches, fairly, you know, comparable in size to uh, loblolly or slash pine, but they can also get up to 18 inches long. Really long. Longleaf are most commonly confused with slash pine, Pinus eliotii, and loblolly pine, Pinus tata. There are a few ways you can differentiate them. Longleaf tend to be longer and thicker, but when you're differentiating them from slash pine, they're both fairly thick. So you can look at the interior of the needle and compare them. Slash pine on the right here is concave. It has like a little divot that runs the entire length of the needle. Whereas longleaf on the left has a raised ridge in the center of each needle. And so that's one way to differentiate those two. You can differentiate them from loblolly Usually just based on the width of the needles, longleaf is almost always much thicker and just more larger and robust than the loblolly. But loblolly also has that raised ridge in the center. It's just going to be smaller than the longleaf. Loblolly on the left, longleaf on the right. The needles are usually shorter on loblolly and the fascicle uh, sheath here is usually shorter as well. And you can just see how much wider the needles are of the longleaf compared to the loblolly. The twigs of longleaf are quite distinctive. When they're fresh, they're very scaly like this. And then the most important thing is their thickness. They keep their width, the diameter of their branches, from the base all the way to the tip. So you can really see how thick they are all the way to the tips. And that is definitely a distinctive feature of the species. From a distance, you can see the thick branches and the very long needles. And the needles are so long, they become floppy and they're densely arranged at the tips of the branches. And so they kind of have this mop head appearance. They're also very glossy and they always catch the sunlight and kind of shimmer in the wind. The huge cones are probably the most distinctive feature of this species. 
The large cones are six to 10 inches long, bigger than any other cone in Florida. And they fall off the tree in the second year, so they usually retain some of their color when they fall. This one had probably been sitting on the ground for a couple of years. They're ovoid to oblong in shape, so they're always longer than they are wide. And they have a little prickle that face downwards. It's kind of um, arranged facing down. So the prickles are only, you know, you feel them when you run your hand up the cone. I wanted to compare the longleaf cones with slash pine, Pinus eliotii, and loblolly pine, Pinus tata. As you can see, unfortunately, it rained yesterday, and when it rains, when the cones get wet, they close up uh, to protect their seeds inside from the water. So most of the cones are partially closed. They're only partially open. Normally, both the loblolly and the slash would be fully open and look much wider. But as you can see, the slash pine cone is very similar to the longleaf cone in shape and structure. But the longer leaf, even the smaller cones are still much more robust and larger. And the prickles on the slash are shorter than the long leaf also. The loblolly cones are grayer because they hang on the tree for so long and they turn that gray color before they eventually fall. They're smaller as well. And the prickles on the loblolly cones point outward. They don't they aren't recurved, they don't point downward, so they're much more, you know, painful to handle. As I mentioned already, the long shimmery needles of longleaf pine tend to be clustered at the tips of their stout, thick branches, which gives it kind of a pom-pom-like appearance. And one of the key identifying features was easily differentiates it from all of our other pine species are these growing bud tips. On long leaf, they're white and they're large. All of our other species have brown bud tips and long leaf have these very large ones that continue to grow and stay white for several inches and they remind people of candles and they're often referred to as candles.